power of the state uh, than we would have been if the cost of central Congress was small. Then we would have been at any point in the last 25 years. Congressman Clay. Well, you know, uh, we're talking about the morning after the people. Actually, the morning after the people is nothing more than the birth control pill. So the birth control pill on the market is the morning after the So if you release all of the bills put together, Planned Parenthood should get nothing, let alone designate a hospital. <laughs> I, I always Title 10 funny. I don't know all things in there I did, but when it came to this issue, I proactively stepped forward and said that we need to do something at least to counterbalance it. A. And B, uh, I, I, I would say that I've always been very public that as President of the United States, I will defund Planned Parenthood. I will not sign any appropriation bill that funds Planned Parenthood. The conservative block. And our inspector, as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, uh, we had a conversation. I, she asked me to support him. I said, will you support the president's nominees? We had a 51-49 majority in the Senate. He said, I'll support the president's nominees as chair of the And just, would do that. And just, no, because he wouldn't have been able to give the moderate Republicans and the conservative Democrats the, the leeway to then support that nominee, which is exactly what our inspector did. He defended Roberts, defended Alito. We have a 5-4 majority on the court that struck down that case that you just talked about and is there as a guardian of liberty. And I did the right thing for our country. Well, I gotta tell you, our inspector... Gentlemen, let's supporting, let's supporting our inspector, supporting our inspector. Sir, identify yourself and ask your question, please. Gentlemen, my name is Mr. Speaker. The fence, the fence has been a, port, a point of contention in the race, and one of your high-profile supporters, a gentleman who's been up here during this campaign, Governor Rick Perry of Texas, is here tonight. And he said this, if you build a 30-foot wall from El Paso to Brownsville, the 35-foot ladder business gets really good. Uh, you signed a pledge to construct a double fence. Why is Governor Perry wrong? He's not wrong. They have to have, to have two 35-foot ladders because it's a double fence. <laughs> uh, what I would do, I would. I, I have a. I have a commitment at Newt.org. I would to, to finish the job by January 1, 2014. I would initiate a bill that would waive all federal regulations, requirements, and studies. I would ask Governor Brewer here. I would ask Governor Martinez, Governor Brown, and Governor Perry to become the co-leaders in their state. We would apply as many resources as are needed to be done by January 1 of 2014, including, if necessary, there are 23,000 Department of Homeland Security personnel in the D.C. area. I'm prepared to move up to half of them to Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. This is a doable thing. Governor Romney, the border security is part of the equation. Uh, what to do about them, whether it's 8 or 11 million illegal immigrants in the country now, is another part of the equation. And Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who's with us tonight from Maricopa County, is in the audience. He told me, told me this week here in Mesa, these are his words. It's called political garbage, if you will, to not arrest illegals already in this country. Uh, you've talked, Governor, about self-deportation. If businesses do their job asking for the right documents, the people will leave. But what about arresting? Should there be aggressive, seek them out, find them, and arrest them as Sheriff Arpaio advocates? You know, I think you see a model here in Arizona. The right course for America is to drop these lawsuits against Arizona and other states that are trying to do the job Barack Obama isn't doing. drop those lawsuits, lawsuits on day one. I'll also complete the fence. I'll make sure we have enough border patrol agents to secure the fence, and I will make sure we have an e-verify system and require employers to check the documents of workers and to check e-verify. And if an employer hires someone that has not gone through e-verify, they're going to get sanctioned just like they do for not paying their taxes. You do that, and just as Arizona is finding out, you can stop illegal immigration. It's time we finally did it. That's a great question sent to us at CNNPolitics.com. Define yourself using one word, gentlemen, and one word only. Can the candidates keep it that short? Stick around and find out. Okay, hey, hey guys, whenever you see that shot on the screen of us outside, CNN, they want you to be waving. Your hands looking up at the camera. This is the first time this has been done in any of these debates. So this is a great shot, a great representation of all the fun that we can have in Arizona. So remember, when you see yourselves up there on the screen, go crazy, all right?
We're just moments away from getting the answer to this question from a viewer. Please define yourself using one word and one word only. A lot of excitement here in Mesa, Arizona, and a lot more of our Republican presidential debate just ahead. Please stay with us. We're back in Mesa, Arizona for our Arizona Republican presidential debate. And gentlemen, we have a question here from CNNPolitics.com. Without caveats or explanations, please define yourself using one word and one word only. Congressman Paul? Consistent. Senator Santoro? Courage. That's two words. Governor? Resolute. There you go. Mr. Speaker. One word. Sure. <laughs> and I believe women have the capacity to serve in our military in, in, uh, in positions of significance and responsibility, as we do throughout our, our society. Uh, I, 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 do think, I do think that the key decisions that are being made by this administration, by President Obama, however, related to our military, are seriously awry. This is a president who is shrinking our Navy, shrinking our Air Force, wants to shrink our active duty personnel by 50 to 100,000, is cutting our military budget by roughly a trillion dollars. The world is more dangerous. It is not safer. Uh, North Korea is going through transition. The Arab Spring has become the Arab winter. Where the hell is it? Syria. But Speaker Gingrich, on the question of a more prominent combat role for women, good idea or bad idea? No, I think, look, I think it's a misleading question in the modern era. You live in a world of total warfare. Uh, if you are anybody serving our country in uniform, virtually anywhere in the world, could be in danger at virtually any minute. The truck driver can get blown up by a bomb as readily as the infantryman. So I, I, I would say that you ought to ask the combat leaders what they think is an appropriate step, as opposed to the social engineers of the Obama administration. This is the most dangerous president on national security ground in American history. He got me loaded, Gingrich! The problem is, the wars we fight aren't defensive war, they're offensive war. We're involved in, in way too much. They're undeclared, they're not declared by the Congress, and so we're in wars that shouldn't be involved, so I don't want even the men to be over there. I don't want women to be killed, but I don't want the men being killed in these wars. But because now we have accepted now for 10 years that we're allowed to start war, we call it preemptive war, preventive war. Well, that's an aggressive war. I believe in the Christian just war theory that you have to morally justify the war in defense. Now, if we're defending our country and we need to defend, believe me, when men and women will be in combat and defending our country, and that's the way it should be, but when it's an offensive war going where we shouldn't be, that's quite a bit different. So it's the foreign policy that needs examination. Senator? Uh, I, I actually agree with the comments made by the two gentlemen to my left uh, that there are different roles of women in the combat. There are the front line uh, right now. Their combat zone is, uh, as you said, everywhere, unfortunately, in that environment. Uh, my concern that I expressed, I didn't say it was wrong. I said, Hi, my name is Kent Taylor from Wickenburg, Arizona, and my question to all the candidates is, uh, how do you plan on dealing with the uh, growing nuclear threat in Iran? The, the fact is, this is a dictator, Ahmadinejad, who has said he doesn't believe the Holocaust existed. This is a dictator who said he wants to eliminate Israel from the face of the earth. This is a dictator who said he wants to drive the United States out of the Middle East. I'm inclined to believe dictators. Now, I, I think that it's dangerous not to. This goes back to a point that Congressman Paul raised that we probably disagree on. I do believe there are moments when you preempt. If you think a madman is about to have nuclear weapons, and you think that madman is going to use those nuclear weapons, then you have an absolute moral obligation to defend the lives of your people by eliminating the capacity to get nuclear weapons. Look, the price of gasoline pales in comparison to the idea of Ahmadinejad with nuclear weapons. 
Ahmadinejad having fissile material that he can give to Hezbollah and Hamas and that they can bring into Latin America and potentially bring across the border into the United States to, to let off dirty bombs here? I mean, this, or, or, or more sophisticated bombs here. This, we simply cannot allow Iran to have nuclear weapons. This is a president who should have instead communicated to Iran that we are prepared, that we are considering military options. They're not just on the table, that are in, they are in our hand. We must not allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon. If they do, the world changes, America will be at risk, and someday nuclear weaponry will be used. If I'm president, that will not happen. If we re-elect Barack Obama, it will happen. Uh, I agree with uh, Governor Robert's comment. I think they're absolutely right on and well spoken. Uh, I disagree because uh, we don't know if they have a weapon. Matter of fact, there's no evidence that they have it. There is no evidence. Israel, Israel claims they do not have it, and our and our government doesn't. I don't want them to get a weapon, but I think what we're doing is encouraging them to have a weapon because they feel threatened. If you look at a map of, uh, if you look at a map of Iran, we have 45 bases around their country plus our submarines. The Iranians can't possibly attack anybody, and we're worrying about the possibility of one nuclear weapon. Now, just think about the Cold War. The Soviets had 30,000 of them, and we talk to them. The Soviets killed a hundred million people and the Chinese and we worked our way out of it. And if you want to worry about nuclear weapons, worry about the nuclear weapons that were left over from the Soviet Union. They're still floating around. They don't have them all detailed. So we're ready to go to war. I say going to war uh, rapidly like this is risky and it's reckless. Now, if you're so determined to go to war, the only thing I plead with you for, if, if if, if, if this is the case, is do it properly. Ask the people and ask the Congress for a declaration of war. This is war. The people are going to die. You've got to get a declaration of war. In regards to Syria, should the United States intervene and should we arm the rebellion? Senator Santorum, let me start with you on this one. The American this president has, has obviously a very big problem in standing up to the Iranians in any form. If this would have been any other country, given what was going on and the mass murders that we're seeing there, this president would have quickly and, and, and joined the international community, which is calling for his ouster and the stop of this. But he's not. He's not. Because he's afraid to stand up to Iran. He opposed the sanctions in Iran against the, against the, the, the central banks until his, his own party finally said, you're killing us. Please support these sanctions. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a president who isn't going to stop them. He isn't going to stop them from getting a nuclear weapon. We need a new president, or we are going to have a cataclysmic situation with an, an, a power that will, is the most prolific proliferator of terror in the world. To be frank, I don't care what you do. The Chinese have a big problem because you ain't going to have any oil. We clearly should have our allies, this is old-fashioned work, we should have our allies covertly helping destroy the Assad regime. Yeah! Uh, there are lots of weapons available in the Middle East. And I agree with, with Senator Santorum's point. This is an administration which, as long as you're America's enemy, you're safe. You know, the only, the only people you got to worry about is if you're an American ally. I don't believe I'm going to get the conversion on the moral and the constitutional arguments in the near future. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to win this argument for economic reasons. Just remember, when the Soviets left, they left not because we had to fight them, they left because they bankrupted this country, and we better wake up, because that is what we're doing here. We're destroying our currents, and we have a financial crisis in our hands. Uh, well, I'm not going to come in on that unless you'd like to. Uh, with regards to your question, um, I came into a state where Republicans and Democrats had worked to, before I got there to make some very important changes. They said that they were going to test our kids every year. They said to graduate from high school, you're going to have to pass an, an exam in English and math. I was the first governor that had to enforce that provision. <laughs> Next 10 days or so, Republican voters are clearly having a hard time. I want to close with this question. 
help the voters who still have questions about you. What is the biggest misconception about you in the public debate right now? I think that the fact is that the American public are really desperate to find somebody who can solve real problems. I think that's why it's been going up and down and why you've had all sorts of different folks as front runners. Uh, and all I can say is that my background of having actually worked with President Reagan than having been Speaker. If there was one thing I wish the American people could know about me, it would be the amount of work it took to get to welfare reform, a balanced budget, a 4.2% unemployment rate, and that you've got to have somebody who can actually get it done in Washington, not just describe it on the campaign trail. And we invite you to spend your night tonight, enjoy the great music. Yeah, you know. 